Hello, my name is Daniel Kanepa. Today we're going to be touching upon the topic of deliverance. We're going to start teaching, video, uh, doing videos teaching on this topic. We're going to go step by step on how to cast out demons. And we're going to be talking very specific about each of the steps. So I hope that this is a blessing and I hope that this is edifying for you and for those who are wanting to learn on this topic, who have hit a wall or who are limited. I want to read from Luke chapter 1, verse 3 says, It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write to you an orderly account, that you may know the certain, certainty of these things. So I read that because I also want to make an account of the things that I've learned from Scripture, from watching different teachers and some who I would say they made a lot of mistakes and some didn't. But in my case, the Lord has allowed me by His mercy to live through many experiences of deliverance where I've learned firsthand things that I should do and things that I should not do. And a lot of times it is through trial and error. And in the end, what's important is the fruit that a person is truly set free and stays free. So that's the point. That's why we're doing this teaching. So let's go ahead and begin today. We're doing the first step, which is to understand the difference between a door and a portal, okay? Now, doors and portal, what, what are they? Well, they are an opening. They are an opening that demons enter. So an opening which demons enter, okay? Enter the body or in, enter the person, or in this case, we're going to be talking, uh, the person that you're praying for, we're going to be talking to, uh, about them as the patient, kind of like uh, a doctor, a doctor's office. They talk about the patient that to diagnose, they have to uh, provide a, a medicine or a cure. And in this case, we are setting them free in the name of Jesus. So we're going to talk about them as patients. That way we're all talking about the same language, okay? We understand each other. So first, an opening is either a door let me draw here something to help us. So this is a door. It's a handle. And this is a portal. And there are openings into the body, into the person. And they start with a curse. So a curse is an opening. And there's two types of openings that we are gonna talk about today, which are the main uh, two ways that this happens. Okay? So the door. The door is something that is direct, that is voluntarily, voluntary, that is self-inflicted. It's a self-inflicted curse. By breaking the commandments, it's an opening through sin. And, very important, it's legal. It's legal. That means the enemy has legal right to enter because it's a door that you opened. A portal is indirect, is involuntary, is not self-inflicted, and is not by breaking the commandments or is not done through sinning. It's not opened by sinning. So that means that it's not legal. Not legal. Okay, so first we're going to go ahead and talk about the doors. A door is an opening that you don't normally open because you make a decision. You take the action and have the ability to open the door. Where do we find this? Well, let's talk about the blessings and the curses to fully grasp this. Let's go to De uh, Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28 Starting from verse 1, we're going to talk about the blessings, of, the blessings of God. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently open, obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all His commandments, which I command to you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your, of your ground, and the increase of your herds, and the increase of your cattle and offsprings of your flocks. 
Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall be you when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They should come at you against you one way and should flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessings on you and your storehouses. And we see here that is the blessings from God because of keeping his commandments. This means not sinning, keeping the commandments. Okay, and then we go to in the same chapter, uh, chapter 28, starting from verse 15. We see here the curses that God uh, gives. So it's the curses from God for not obeying the commandments, for breaking the commandments. But it shall come to pass, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command to you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Curses shall you be in the city, and curses shall, be, shall you be in the country. Curse shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Curse shall be the fruit of your body and the produce of your land, the increase of your cattle and of the, springs of your the offsprings of your flocks. Curse shall you be when you come in and curse shall you be when you go out. The Lord will send on you cursing, confusion, and rebuke and all that you set your hand to do. So it keeps going here. Curses from God for breaking the commandments. And there's also curses that the whole congregation declares upon themselves if they are broken, uh, if they do these things. So chapter 27, verse 15 says, Curse is the one who makes a carved or model image, an abomination to the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and sets it up in secret. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Curse is the one who treats his father or his mother with contempt. And all the people shall say, Amen. Curse is the one who moves his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say amen. Curse is the one who makes the blind to wander off the road, and all the people shall say amen. Curse is the one who perverts the, just, the justice due to the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and all the people shall say amen. So here we see the curses that come upon somebody for sinning, for breaking the commandments, for doing wrong to their neighbors, so they are cursed. A door is open and a curse comes upon them and is legal. Now, are we the only ones who can open doors in our lives? And the answer is no. The sins of the fathers are also doors, even if it hasn't been directly opened by you or the patient. In Leviticus 26, we see this. So let's go to Leviticus 26. Sorry, chapter 26, verse 39. And those of you who are left shall waste away in their iniquities in your enemies' lands. Also in their father's iniquities, which are with them, they shall waste away. Okay, so let's go now to Exodus 34 to see another example of that. Exodus 30, uh, 34, verse 7. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty. It's talking about God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and to the fourth generation. So it's talking about generational curses. It's visiting the iniquity, visiting the sins, sins which was legal on the children's children to the third and fourth generation. And there's another example here I want to give in Deuteronomy, which is a really big, a big curse that comes upon you, upon the patient. And it is on Deuteronomy 20, 23, verse 2. One of illegitimate birth, or, or a bastard, shall not enter the assembly of the Lord even to the tenth generation. None of his descendants shall enter the assembly of the Lord. So to the 10th generation, that's 10 generations, a long time. So that's a curse of, known as a curse of the bastard. And it's a real curse of illegitimacy. All right. For this reason, there are many men and women with particular weaknesses, which they haven't brought upon themselves. Even if they are, even if they are born again, there are certain desires and certain attractions. There are certain doors, certain desires and attractions that are activated since birth or childhood. For example, towards drug use, towards alcohol, towards the same gender, towards fear, towards a desire that was not 
initiated by you or the patient directly. It was from the sins of the father. Now, I do want to make mention some doors that are, I will consider from my experience, these are the biggest doors that are opened. And I'm just talking about doors in general. So that's one, two, and three doors. Put it, make it go this way. Okay, three doors. These are the biggest doors that I've seen the most uh, and biggest demons come in. First one. First one is the occult. Oops, of the occult. Uh, the smallest one here in the list is fornication. And the one in the middle that I'm mentioning here is a mix of the two. What is it? It's sexual abuse. Why is it a mix of the two? Because whether the person abusing or not doesn't know it, but they're doing a, a ritual. Uh, it's, uh, sexual abuse is a satanic ritual, whether they're doing it on purpose or not, and it's fornication. Okay, this is voluntarily. Voluntary, voluntary. And then this one is not voluntary. I just wanted to mention that because I think it's very important to understand some of these things. So we know when you have a bigger, uh, a bigger task at hand, when it's from this, you have a really big task also if it's from this, and then here, and it goes on, they get smaller, like drug use, all these things. Um, but these are the ones that I found are the biggest doors that you're going to have the most work with. All right, we talked about doors. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about portals. A portal is an opening that you don't open voluntarily, but it also is not, it's not through sin either. There doesn't need to be a legal right, so it's not legal. It's not legal. There does not need to be a legal right to open a portal. It is normally caused by some type of witchcraft or uh, witchcraft. Okay, and we see that. Let us go to Numbers, the book of Numbers, chapter 22, verse four. So Moab said to the elders of Midian, now this company will lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Sippor, was king of um, Moabites at that time, and he sent messengers to Balaam, the son of Beor, and Pe Petor, which is near the river in the land of the sons of his people, to call him, saying, Look, a people has come from Egypt. See, they cover the face of the earth and are settling next to me. Therefore, please come at once. Curse this people for me. So curse, not legally, so curse them. Just curse them. For me, for they are too mighty for me, perhaps I shall be able to defeat them. So Balaam was, I believe he was either, uh, he was a grandchild of one of the magicians who faced Moses. And so people could say, some people could say he was a magician, he was a prophet. But it says here, for I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and he whom you curse is cursed. So he knew this was, this was information that, that this king had that this man, Balaam, would curse somebody and they would be cursed. He would bless and they would be blessed like a prophet. Okay, so let us go now to the book of Job for another example of a portal that was opened. In the beginning of Job chapter 1, we know that the devil, Lucifer, came to God's presence and God talked about Job, how he was a, a perfect man. He was righteous. And the devil spoke this way. Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. So he was doing good. He was protected by God. He was blessed by God. So there was no known legal right. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will assuredly curse you. 
to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has, so all his possessions and his family, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person or his body. So then we see on chapter 2, continuing, that he did destroy. He was able or had the, he had, he had approved a curse, a portal, not legal, but he was approved an opening to touch his belongings. So his belongings were destroyed and his family was destroyed. Chapter two, verse four. So Satan came, sorry, Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. Yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh. And he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, he is in your hand, but spare his life. Not his, his don't touch his body, he said this time. This time he said, spare his life. So here we see that God approved, not legally, because we see the entire book of Job, the entire, all the chapters, all these chapters, when you read, you're going to see a, that he was talking, three men were talking to him, and then a younger man trying to find a legal right. Why did this happen to Job? They were trying to find, trying to find, and they couldn't. And then the Lord answered. And what did he say? Let's go to the end of Job. Let's go to chapter 42, last chapter. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do everything. So he can do everything. He, he allowed us to happen. He can do it. He's God. And that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. You ask, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered why I did not understand. Things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. So the devil was given an approval from God to test. So in this case, God tested Job to see if he would blaspheme, he would curse God. And he, a curse was allowed to come upon his life to, to destroy everything he had, and it was not legal, but God allowed it. In this case, God allowed it. Let's see another example, very important, in John chapter 9, verse 1. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. So did Jesus say, no, it's not because he, did he deny what they said? No. So it's not because of him and it's not because of his parents that they sinned. But he didn't deny that because of the parents' sin, it's possible to be born blind. So here we see that it is possible. Jesus did not deny that possibility of that. But he said, but that the works of God should be re revealed in him. So Jesus says to allow your good works to be shown, to be visible to men so that they may glorify God when they see your good works. So that was a good work that was prepared beforehand, that this man was born blind so that God could be glorified. It had, there was a purpose for that. And there was also a purpose here for Job to test his heart. So sometimes it's for God to be glorified. Sometimes it's a test to test your heart, to, to see if, if you're going to remain uh, upright and not blaspheme, not turn from God. And then there's the last case. The last case is usually a curse. So something that is not necessarily what we just mentioned is just somebody doing witchcraft, direct witchcraft to you. So portals are normally cause, they normally cause what? They normally cause affliction, they cause ruin, they cause sickness, and we don't know why. In cases such as Job, the enemy was granted, so he was granted an opening. And another more common cases is the work of witchcrafts. These works are, are somebody directly inflicting damage to you. So I want to give an example of a, a friend of mine, a brother here in Orlando. He told me this testimony. Uh, some time ago, he had, a, he had a company, and he did an association, a partnership with another man. This man so this, this brother of mine, he's a believer. He's a, he's a man of God. But his partner in the company was not a man of God. And he, would, uh, you know, he knew that this was a man of God. He would witness to him, and he wanted to cut ties with him because he was, it was just not going so good with him as a partner. So then one time, it, things got really bad, and he pretty much kicked him off his property. He told me, get your things and leave. And this man walked into this office, 
So this other man walked into the brother's office and cursed him to his face. And he said, knowing that he's a believer, he said, in the name of Jesus, I curse you. And he told him just like that. And he said that something came upon him. This brother said something came upon him and he felt sick. He felt ill. He felt like his mind was like going away. And he was, he was down. I don't know how many days he had. He called people to pray for him, called brothers to pray for him. And then he was set free. And it was a curse that came upon him from the words. So there was words, there was power, there was intention. So this man was not a believer. He was not a witch, not any type of warlock, whatever. But he spoke these words. And it, it, it hit him. It caused affliction. So that was a portal. Not necessarily there was any sin involved. It was just something that happened through words. So portals are normally open through words against you, intentionally to cause you harm. There are other ways to gain the power, to increase the power of the, these portals. And uh, that's when the, the witchcraft takes, takes form. It increases in power in, uh, in volume, you could say, and that's done through pictures. Somebody having your picture and cursing you is done through your clothes. Somebody having your clothes and cursing you is done through hair. Uh, the example, I have, I have an example. I, I, did a, I did a photography job some time ago, and I didn't really want to do it because it was a, it was a baby baptism, but it was it people that I knew it was a job, and, and I'm like, you know, let's give to Caesar what is Caesar's. And I, I, let me tell you, I'm never going to do it again. I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't know what I was getting into. But I know God allowed it for me to learn, to see, to witness that. So what I saw, there was a girl, like a young girl. I think she was two. One, I don't know if she was one or two. But she already was well and old enough to know what was going on. And she, didn't, she was crying. It, it seemed like torture to her. So they had her naked in a big bowl in this big cathedral, a Catholic church. And they were circling her. People were circling with... with um, with candles, and if you ask me where that is in the Bible to do that, it, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, you know, it's just ignorant people. But um, they were circling her, and then they cut her hair, and they put her hair in a, in a, in a little bottle, a jar, and, uh, and they put this jar, I don't know, somewhere on, in the back of the building, underneath, I don't know, but I understood. So when I saw that, I understood what happened. This was a, a witchcraft that was done. It was a, a binding of her soul to the Vatican, to the Roman Empire, to that, that prostitute of a church, and, and it was a binding. So it's, she didn't do it, and the, and the parents didn't know what they were doing. It was, it was a portal that was open. So later on in, in, in that girl's life, if she ever, by the mercy of God, finds the Lord and repents, there's going to be a portal there that has to be destroyed. We'll talk about this more in a moment. But there's also dolls that can be made against you. Not doll. The word idol, idol, comes from the word doll. So originally when dolls were made, they were made for witchcraft. Today, you know, we, there's dolls everywhere. I don't like dolls. But they originally were made for witchcraft, okay? There's altars. So witches make altars against you with, with uh, different things on them. There's burials. They can bury animals against you. There's pentagrams. People draw pentagrams. They draw triangles. Uh, there's uh, sacrifices. People uh, against you. Not necessarily a burial, but it's a sacrifice. And then there's anathemas or cursed objects that people have and put on your, in your house or, or consecrate or, you know, objects to be placed, to be used for um, power, energy against you. And I have a testimony of that. I had a brother that came here and he told us uh, a testimony or, or something that happened in his congregation that it was something was, there was a ruin and there was like a spirit of ruin, of poverty, just like it wasn't normal. And he knew that it was, it was not legal. He's like, something's wrong, something's off, something is not working right. And he tried everything. And one time they said they were praying and fasting and a woman in his congregation received a, a vision that outside his window, there was a medallion of some sort. And then he went out and he looked outside every window and then he found it. Uh, one of the windows did have something hanging and it was a medallion. And he told me that this woman came into this house uh, pretending to be, uh, you know, somebody seeking help. And she was a witch sent on a mission to put that object in his house, to curse the house. So a portal was open. There was no right. She just wanted to curse him. It was, it was a work done against him. But that wouldn't have been found unless there was prayer and fasting. And we'll talk about that. How are, how are these things closed? How, how was the solution to this? Well, doors, 
You have to understand that a door is a way for a demon to enter and to continue entering. And a portal is an opening that does not need a door, but it remains open until it's gone. So a door is an opening that you decide to open and also decide to close. So you open it, you close it. Why? Because it's a desire. It's a desire. That means the enemy can keep, continue to come because he knows that door. That's, he knows that house, your body, and he knows there's a desire there. So he continues to come and he finds the door open. And the enticer comes to tent by knocking on the door and you decide to open it or leave it closed. Because if you open it, he enters. Let us go now to Matthew 16. Because the Lord gave us authority over these things. Matthew 16, verse 19, it says, And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. You see, the door is closed through specific confessions. So when you're dealing with somebody that has an open door, they have to confess their sins, specifically confess, specifically, 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 Every, what they know that has caused the door to open, it has to be specific, specific, and it has to be a genuine repentance, genuine. So specific confession and genuine repentance. That's why the, the true gospel of repentance for the remission of sins it's very important, the, the true gospel to be preached so they understand that they have to go and sin no more so the door's closed. Because if it's not closed, then the demon will enter again and the door just remains open. Where do we see this? In Matthew chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 43. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. So shall it be in his wicked generation. Okay, so the key word here, and when he comes. How does he come? Well, the door's open. He's cast out. So you cast out a demon. Out, out in Jesus' name. And he leaves. So there's a lot of ministers out there who just cast them out, but they don't give the right message. So the door is open. There's no genuine repentance. Door is wide open. He comes back and he says, and when he comes, he finds. So how, did, how is he able to look inside and see that the house is swept clean and in order, meaning that it's a suitable place for a demon to live in because in, there's willful sin. So he finds it. He comes because it's open. And then he sees that it's open. And he's like, okay, let me come, let me get back up. Let me get more power. So he finds other demons who are going to help him when they enter, make the, the state of that man worse than the first. Okay? Let's go to another example here. In John chapter 5, verse 14. There's a paralytic man. He says, uh, 5.14, it says, Afterward, Jesus found him after he was, he was healed and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. What's the worst thing? When the demon brings other demons. Now, how do you close the door that your father is open? So we understand here confession, repentance. Okay, I did this. It was legal. I understand. You have to... Uh, how, do you, how do you close the door if your fathers uh, have sinned? First, by prayer and fasting, the Lord reveals the opening. Very important. But if it's known to you the sins of your father and the consequences of that have been that you're being cursed, then you have to ask the Lord directly yourself. Where do we find that? Um, first, I want to make a point here on Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. It says here, that having wiped out the handwritings of requirements or legal rights, legal rights, having wiped them out that were against us, which was contrary to us, 
and having been, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. So the Lord has taken them away, taken out the legal right and nailed them to the cross. But does that mean that you automatically have that right to take them away just by um, accepting the Lord in your heart, repenting, being baptized? You have to confess your sins. And then, you'll have, and then that blessing, you'll, you'll be able to have the keys to close that door. But you have, to, you have to repent with all your heart, and it has to be true. And then you can claim what, what, this, what the word says, not before, not just by the accepting God in your heart. All right, now let's go to Leviticus 26, what we read earlier. Starting from verse 20, uh, 39. And those of you who are loved shall waste away in their iniquities, in their enemies' lands, also in, the, in their father's iniquities, which are with them, they shall waste away. But if they confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with the unfaithfulness in which they were unfaithful to me, and that they also have walked contrary to me, and that I have also walked contrary to them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies. Why? Because the curse came upon them. Where we read in Deuteronomy that, that God curses if you break, break the law, break uh, his commandments, and then he says that he's going to walk contrary to you. If their uncircumcised hearts are humbled and they accept their guilt, then I will remember my covenant with Jacob and my covenant with Isaac and my covenant with Abraham, and I will remember, and I will remember their, the land. So we have to confess the iniquities of our fathers. If we know that they have a background like this, like this, like this, uh, and the backgrounds that you know are sin and are wickedness, then you confess for them. All you have to do is says, it says, what it says here, confess their iniquity, meaning that you ask God to forgive them and ask God to cut that curse that fell upon your life for the sins of your father. Many people think that this is a false teaching, but through experience, through practicing this, like I said at the beginning, through trial and error, we have found that this is true. So ask forgiveness for your father's sins and break that curse. And if you don't know, then while you're praying and fasting, God may reveal something that your parents have done, something that your grandparents have done. God will reveal it. He'll show you. I mean, we'll talk about that later on, but he will reveal. And when that happens, well, when that happens, you close the door. You close it. God's giving you the authority to close it. And the door is closed. Why? Because God gave you God gave you the key. So he gave you the keys for this. You have authority. You have to close the door. Now, by you closing the door, I mean you have to lead. You have to lead that person to close the door. And, and we'll talk about the binding and everything later on. Now, for a portal, a portal, a door is closed. So let me write this here. Closed. But a portal, you can't close it. It has to be destroyed. You don't close a portal, you destroy it. You weaken it, weaken its power, and it becomes nothing. So a portal is something that Neither you or your parents open through sin. Portals are not closed, they are destroyed. They don't open it back up because it's not through a desire, it's not through a door. It's not through a desire that the tempter can come and entice you. You need to identify the portal and destroy it. Just like doors, portals are identified through prayer and fasting. Uh, In my case, I have an example of this. Something happened to me uh, some time ago. We were going to go to the Dominican Republic, and that trip was a blessing. We baptized many people. We preached the gospel there, put the foundation, and many of those people are bearing fruit today. Many uh, disciples there are bearing fruit today, so it was a blessing. 
So two days before this trip, I was in my room and a sharp pain came upon the back of my neck. And it was so bad that I became paralyzed. It was, it just ran through my whole body and I became tense, I couldn't move. So I just went to my bed, I laid down and I couldn't get up. I was just in so much pain and it was from nothing. So um, it was so bad, I didn't want to go to the hospital because I knew it's, it, it was spiritual, something happened. And it was not legal. I was checking myself, I was like, no, I, I know I didn't open any doors, something's happened. And we prayed, we, we called the congregation and we, we told what happened, we, we started praying. And somebody received the revelation, a vision, that in the Dominican Republic, they were plas- passing out our flyers to come to the, one of the preaching, uh, preachings that was going on. And it was without our permission or without our knowing. We didn't know they were going to pass out flowers and our pictures. I, don't, I normally don't like that. Why? Because of what I'm going to tell you. That's why. My picture, my actual picture was on that flyer. So my face was on that flyer. And they were passing out in the streets. So then in the vision, the revelation they saw a witch that grabbed my picture, put it on the altar with, with candles and did a witchcraft on me. So when we prayed against that, we prayed against this that was open, not legally. We prayed against it, we destroyed it, and then I started feeling better. And I was, I, that, that went away, I was healed, and I knew that it was from witchcraft, that was a portal, okay? Now, portals, they need to be identified. What are portals? They're, they're words that are spoken against you and they gain power through pictures, photos, through clothes, through hair, your hair, dolls, altars, burials, pentagrams, triangles, sacrifices, anathemas. And destruction has to be declared upon it after identifying it. So you can't just say, I, dest- I destroy all portals. I close all doors. Like you have to identify it because that's the way it works. Uh, destruction has to be declared upon it because that's the way that it loses power and is turned off. Even if the object, so even that picture in the Dominican Republic was still there, the altar was still there, but it lost power because in the spiritual realm, it was destroyed, it was burned up. Um, and the Lord has power after it's destroyed spiritually. So a door is closed, a portal is destroyed. So once you declare in Jesus' name destruction upon that portal, then it becomes smaller, 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 until eventually it just poof. It withers away and and it can't be opened back up unless they do somebody does a new something new. So that's it. I hope this has been a blessing to you. We're gonna continue to do more teachings on this topic, specifically on how to cast out demons, but this is very important to understand before you do so, so you go into that battlefield with understanding, okay? God bless you all.